I want to talk about Git at the Apache Software Foundation. And I chose this title, and specifically the subtitle, uh, weeks um, before April Fools. And I did not realize how apropos it would be. Um, so real quickly, if you don't like this talk, my name's Jake Farrell, and I'm responsible for it. Uh, I, I'm actually, uh, Jake was going to present this with me. Uh, and he helped me work on slides and then had work pull him away. Um, you can see his contact information, and if you don't like this talk, please give feedback to him. If you like it, um, my name's David Nally. Uh, I work on a couple of projects at uh, the ASF uh, Cloud Stack and a little bit on J Clouds. Uh, and uh, out of that, I uh, decided uh, that. Cloud Stack was going to be a painful project because of our copious amounts of needs uh, and our large code base, and uh, that we should kind of pay the infrastructure tax. And so I said I would step up and try and pay that and um, annoyed the infra guys enough till they, till they let me start working a little bit on Git. Largely, that's been uh, the need for me to actually do anything has been obviated because Jake Farrell is uh, so incredibly efficient at getting things done. And if you've made a request for some Git service in the past couple of months, uh, you almost certainly have had him do it. Uh, how many folks here are using Git today for their ASF project? Okay. Anybody considering them, anybody's project considering the move to Git from SVN? Um, so, I want to start off with the rumors because they are the most fun and we're at the end of the day, so we need a little bit of fun, right? The ASF does not allow you to use Git. Uh, this was a rumor, quasi-truth. Uh, the ASF did not have Git uh, as a native service for a long while. Um, there was also Apache Subversion is at the ASF. Um, and a lot of people projected that because Subversion was at the ASF and so many of uh, core folks were involved in Subversion, that that was viewed as the one true version control system. Uh, and clearly both of these are false, right? Um, Subversion has a lot of functionality that simply uh, does a better job if you need it. Git has some appeal as well, and uh, they're different. Uh, and hopefully you can use them in harmony if you have to. Um, there's also a rumor about Subversion moving to Git, uh, which, is, which is great. Uh, it's an April Fool's joke, and it has to be one of the better orchestrated April Fool's jokes uh, that I've seen in the tech industry in a long while. Um, if you're not familiar, anyone not familiar with this April Fool's joke, or is it just pervasive? Okay, so. Um, if you go look at that ticket, uh, the vice president of Subversion, Greg Stein, filed a ticket and said, we took a vote uh, and we have decided, Subversion has decided that they are going to use Git as their, where the code is stored for Subversion. And uh, in the process, all of the other PMC members were clearly in on it. They started adding, posting links to where they had talked about uh, taking over uh, Mercurial in the past and how this was just natural and they were going to uh, add support in the SVN client so that you could clone with SVN uh, a Git repository. They had the press pick up on this. They were on the front page of Hacker News. Uh, they were on the front page of Slashdot. Um, a couple of journalists picked up on it and reported it as factual and said, this is not an April Fool's joke. Look at all of the people coming in, chiming in. There's just too many people from too many organizations. Can't possibly be a joke. Um, uh, Rich Bowen actually, one of, the, one of the folks involved was Rich Bowen, who's the executive vice president of the ASF. And he started criticizing Greg publicly, calling him, you know, this is what people uh, do when they become rock, star, rock stars and forget the community. Uh, and uh, Jim Jag publicly said, you know, this is not acceptable. Uh, I think the board's going to intervene and, and tell you that you need to consider your community. Um, 
They went all day long, literally. Uh, they started at about midnight on April Fool's, shortly after midnight, and went almost till 10 p.m. Uh, incredible execution, but uh, none of this is reality, right? The ASF is uh, just as happy for you to use Git uh, as they are for you to use SVN. Uh, they are just as happy uh, for uh, you to play April Fool's jokes and declare that you're moving something. But you know, none of this is, is reality. So let's talk about today's reality. What, what do you think the division of projects are that are using Git versus Subversion at the ASF? Ten percent? More or less? Twenty-five? Uh, depends upon you know where some of that big data is, right? So today there are fifty-four level, fifty-four top-level projects that have a native Git repository. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean everything is uh, is in Git, but they have at least a single native Git repo. On top of that, there's 24 incubating projects that have a native Git repo. Two hundred twenty-eight native Git repos in total. Uh, that's a much larger number. Um, so we have some projects that uh, that think they need a new Git repo every day of the week. And so they have 50 Git repositories. I won't mention who that is. Cordova. Um, but uh, so some people take this to the extreme. And Git repos are seemingly, at least to them, easy to create. It's just a ticket. This is an interesting figure. 5,500 average commits per month across those, uh, across those 228 uh, Projects, so uh, pretty sizable, pretty sizable uh, amount of activity going on there. And if you want to go see them, uh, you can use this URL: get workinprogress usapacheorg repos asf So <clears throat> that URL: get workinprogress us Why is it still work in progress? Uh, I thought thought this was reality. And there's a couple of things. First of all, Git, there have been Git options at the ASF for a much longer period. Uh, I think at least five years, seven years, uh, they've had uh, the idea of being able to mirror an SVN repo as a Git repo. And that was stood up as git.apache.org. Uh, there's actually, uh, if you want to follow the ticket, uh, infra 4158 has uh, the merging of git.apache.org and git work in progress US uh, to a single host. So your mirrors and your uh, native repos would be in a single place and we'll get rid of the work in progress tag. So let's talk some about the services, the git services that infrastructure provides today. Uh, the first and the easiest is we will mirror your SVN tree in a Git repo. Uh, it's going to be a read-only Git repo, but that does help, uh, does help folks who are uh, used to Git as their version control system, make it a little easier for them to collaborate, make contributions, and lower that bar to participation. And the next step from that is GitHub mirroring. And Apache is a organization on GitHub, and we house 527 mir uh, mirrors from either native Git repos or uh, mirrors of SVN tree. And uh, these all get pulled straight from the Git mirrors, uh, and they do that uh, several times daily, right? And of course, we offer native Git repositories. So um, just to tell you a little bit about how infrastructure runs uh, our native Git repos. 
We do have some hooks. Uh, we will do things like sending a commit message to an email address. We will check and ensure that you are not trying to rewrite history. But in general, we are not going to allow you to have a custom uh, hook. There's a couple of options for getting around that. Um, but the reason that we essentially don't is it is an incredible, uh, incredible overhead. We have hundreds of Git repositories, and uh, we've had uh, folks that long predate me uh, have essentially been in the situation where uh, this custom type of action after any commit uh, can cause performance problems, which then become difficult to find because you've got hundreds of repositories and don't know where it's coming in. So we provide a base level of hooks, and before we would talk about uh, adding more hooks, we would want it to be a foundation-wide um, a foundation-wide hook, not uh, nothing project-specific. This doesn't mean you can't accomplish a lot of the same things. Uh, so there's actually, and we'll talk about this a little later, uh, Git PubSub. So if you're familiar with SVN PubSub, we have uh, Git PubSub available, and you can uh, pull the, that information down and take actions based upon that. And that's actually enabled a lot of uh, very interesting things that are far more compelling than we would have done with hooks, and we'll talk about those in a bit. <clears throat> so let's talk about repository access. Um, most people will put uh, git colon slash slash before the URL. Uh, that will not work for our native rewrite uh, repos. Some people will put SSH in front of it, and that will quickly get your account banned. Um, because you are trying to log into a uh, machine that essentially handles SSL offload. Um, we do, SS, uh, we do uh, get over SSL, so you're going to be doing HTTPS. You can clone it straight HTTP, but uh, it won't allow you to push back. Um, so access control. SVN's access control is incredibly robust and incredibly granular. Uh, Git is not. And uh, it's probably more uh, inflexible than you might imagine. So essentially, the way we do that today is we parse the first portion of the repository name, and then we look for a group that matches that, a group name that matches that, and uh, if you're in that group, you get access, and if you're not, well, you don't. You don't get right access, at least. So this means if you've got an infrastructure pro or an incubator project, uh, say incubator Sentry, uh, we don't care if you're part of Sentry, we care that you're part of the incubator. And uh, so essentially anyone in the incubator has access to every single one of the incubator Git repos. Uh, everyone in the cloud stack, uh, the cloud stack group as a committer has access to all of the cloud stack repos. So if your if your project cares about access control and locking it down, Git is probably not the solution you want today. Any questions about how this is working or what you would like to do with it? Silence. Git works perfectly for everyone. It's awesome. Um, so let's talk about the Git mirrors. Um, they are, by definition, read-only. We'll pull either from a native Git repo or a uh, SVN tree. That's the reason that we would do this regardless is really because of GitHub, right? So we have the Git mirrors uh, pushing to GitHub. And uh, we will, uh, it mirrors new repositories daily. So uh, you have about a day lag. Uh, and we sync the actual commits uh, hourly. So if it's an existing mirror on GitHub, it'll get updates hourly. The, uh, the Infra folks, uh, who, especially the folks who interact with GitHub, are not, do not seem opposed uh, 
Uh, I am not one of the folks who have access to the GitHub organization for Apache, uh, but I've seen them turn on some of the specific GitHub hooks. Again, they have a fixed set of, of hooks, and so I've seen things like the Travis CI hook being turned on so that you can essentially allow GitHub to serve as some of those custom hooks rather than having them uh, be consumed elsewhere. Uh, GitHub is everywhere, and it's been brought up a number of times during ApacheCon. It, it has become a bit of a social, um, a social locus for coding, and um, people know how to do it. That makes it a little easier for them to contribute. Um, but, you know, that also is outside of the norm for a, an Apache project that is used to interacting on a mailing list. Uh, and so, uh, after Infra was, uh, in my opinion, inappropriately blamed for not having thought out this problem in advance and solved it before anyone had ever run into it, um, uh, folks like Daniel Gruno, who's sitting in the back, and you should buy him a beer, uh, and Jake Farrell uh, did a ton of GitHub work. Um, so the first thing is pull requests. They get sent to the mailing list. This actually, this may predate some of the work that you did, right? Yeah. So uh, uh, this is the kind of the easy part. Send the pull request. Um, uh, that at least gives the project notification that someone has tried to interact. Uh, some of the work that, that Daniel actually did is people could go in and make comments uh, on those pull requests. Um, and uh, nobody would ever see that. We would see the initial pull request, but you know, people could be going and having a conversation and that would never cycle back to the project. And so uh, pull requests are the comments. Uh, they come both to the mailing list and they, if they reference a JIRA ticket, uh, they trigger an update on the ticket. But it gets a little better because people at Apache like their mailing lists uh, we would prefer to reply on a mailing list. So if you reply to one of these pull request um, emails or a comment from a pull request, that goes both to the mailing list and will get updated on GitHub and would get updated on the Jira ticket as well if, it, if you referenced one. So essentially we've uh, some tremendous integration between uh, between the GitHub way of doing things and the ASF and showing that they're not completely incompatible. Um, I actually had dinner with some folks uh, who told me that they thought infrastructure should invest in this system so that people on GitHub would see all of the uh, pull requests and comments going to a mailing list and people on the mailing list would see all of that and could reply back very easily. And I looked at them like, we have that. We've had that for months. We blogged about that uh, on the infrastructure blog. So this is, this is really awesome stuff. And uh, if, you, if you have a project that's using Git, and if you have a project uh, who you think uh, folks would want to contribute via GitHub, uh, you can send a request into Infra to turn this on. So. Um, also, if you use this, uh, the terms of the license are not completely open source and you owe a beverage to Humbado for every pull request that comes through. Um, I, I'm joking about that. If you want to read the original blog post, uh, that's, that's up there. So we talked a little bit earlier about GitHub Sub. Uh, I will not spend tons of time talking about it. Uh, but as there's a, there's a web page uh, on the website that talks about it. This powers a lot of the integration with GitHub, powers a lot of the integration with review board. So if you, uh, if you have a review board request uh, the, um, and it actually gets committed, it will automatically, assuming you have it turned on, it will automatically uh, push that into uh, into review board and show you the commit ID, the commit hash, uh, and uh, branches it was applied to, et cetera. 
Uh, and that's, uh, that type of thing is great, especially if you don't know if, what the status on a, uh, on a review board request is. Uh, so there's, there's a ton of these types of integrations around Git uh, that take it really above uh, just a Git hosting service uh, and build it into a lot of the other ASF's resources. So how do you get your own project's Git repo? Um, you can go request uh, via an infra ticket in Jira. Uh, please make sure the component set is Git, otherwise uh, it'll stay lost forever. Uh, people actually watch the components that they work on, and uh, some people will go and review routinely to see things that don't have a component set, uh, but uh, please set that as Git. Ask, wait, show up. If you want a, um, if you actually want to uh, migrate from subversion to Git, uh, you can expect that your SV entry is going to be frozen. It's going to be read only for a while. Um, people will grab the, uh, the subversion tree. They'll do the migration. They'll post it up. The Git repo will be read only. And we would expect the PMC to go and review that repository uh, and actually sign off that the content in the repository is the same as uh, the content in the SV entry. And once we got that sign off, we would make that writable again. We generally trust the tools to do a good job. We found multiple cases where the tools have blown up and uh, you know, they only went back 10 months instead of 12 months uh, or something like that. So uh, it's, uh, it's worth uh, taking a look into if you're going to actually do the migration. Now I'm curious, you showed up at 3.15 today. Why did you come to, talk, to listen to me talk about Git? Because only a few folks were using Git at the ASF. Yes? Uh, on with the uh, OSB project, we have both mailing lists and drive-by users who are filing GitHub issues. And I wanted to hear more about the integration between lists and Git. Yeah. Um, so is that all in the... Uh, is that all in the wilderness tree? Uh, no. no? Where, where is, where's the source code for that? For the GitHub mailing list, uh, pull request to mailing list. Okay. See it. It's uh, publicly re readable. Okay. So. Um, so definitely check that out. I will say um, I am using, so I was a part of one project that wanted to use GitHub as their primary workflow, and they hacked their way around it. They created an account on GitHub for their dev mailing list, and then of course, you know, you could reset the password because it was, the password reset link was sent to a public mailing list, but essentially it was sending all of the, um, <clears throat> We went in and watched with that account the uh, repositories in question, and we were seeing the pull request come and go and all the comments, and that was a dirty hack. It, it was quick, right? Um, the, uh, and, and it was long before this, because it didn't cross our mind that this was uh, Infra's responsibility to solve. It's nice that they did, but really, uh, the PMC was responsible for ensuring that uh, the conversations happened on the project's mailing list, and that was just the easiest way for us to accomplish that. Um, but that's, that's dirty and awful, and you should really look at this because it's, it enables a lot of other things. So tying it into your bug tracker, um, uh, it just it becomes a lot more utilitarian than uh, brute forcing uh, mail notifications. Um, it also meant that you couldn't reply, right? So you can't reply to the mailing list. Uh, and get an answer back on GitHub. Why else are folks here? Is anyone upset about uh, about the April Fool's joke? I'm, I'm serious. Does anyone does anyone think that went too far? Nobody. No one wants to admit to it. Is anyone a Git hater? 
I was, uh, was going to call you out if you didn't raise your hand. <laughs> um, you know, I don't think there's anything religious one way or the other. It's, uh, they're tools, right? Um, I prefer Puppet. There are other folks who prefer Chef. Use one of them. It doesn't matter. Um, I, I am curious. So I've, uh, we actually had a uh, Ask Infra questions uh, yesterday, and so I'm going to turn around and ask uh, Joe a question. You mentioned that a lot of the decentralization of things like build services has occurred because of Git's decentralized model. Do you think that's had a deleterious effect on the way folks interact? Do you, not, do you want me to not ask you? It's just different. I, I think this is just the way software is developed nowadays. Hmm. I mean, I, I don't think, I mean, back when there was a church of Apache when nobody really wanted to deal with version control on any level. Yeah. You know, when CVS was it, and that was, you know, it's just whatever we could provide for people. There were just so few options for people to provide. I mean, now foundations here are even questionable whether or not you need a foundation. So, to each their own. I mean, Apache's got a certain stick to it. I don't think it's that any worse or better, or it's just different. It's just the way things are now. I, I think it's a different tool, and, and it's, uh, my impression is you could abuse that perhaps in different ways that you could abuse SVN. So um, it really comes down to the community. But um, anyone uh, using Git not happy with the service at the ASF? OK, tell me why. Commit mails. So um, previous project, we used SVN, and the commit mails were fine there. You make a commit, you make a check-in, you get a mail, and you could easily follow all the changes in the, in the uh, source code repository. Um, Git is fine, we are happy with that, but the commit mails became more or less useless because of we are getting so many mails. So if you do, we do a lot of development in feature branches. So you, for each check-in in the feature branch, you get a commit mail. Later you do a push, you get the same commit mail again because right. of it's now in the new merge. branch. Merge and with that, we lost somehow the control about all the check-ins in the, in the Git repository because of uh, you get so many of the mails. And maybe it could make sense to restrict the commit mails only on the master branch, not on the feature branch, so that you not get mails or if someone checks in the, into a feature branch. Uh, not I, I would never, I would never cause such a change to happen. And I think that I think that the two root at folks here are probably cringing at that request because I think that denies oversight. You could have people going off into a feature branch doing awful mm. things. Um, I, do you have do you have the commit messages set up so that the subject tells you what branch they're in? Yeah. Oh I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I think so, yes. So so that's actually what I had to do with CloudStack. There are scores of feature branches okay. leading up to a release and people working on their uh, on their feature and then getting it ready for merge uh, and then merging it in. And so not only do you have all of the feature branches trying to keep up with where master is, you also have all of those doing their own work and then eventually duplicating those emails when they make the merge. Uh, and then those get duplicated again because all the other feature branches aren't ready for merge yet, so they suck in the changes. Um, so I actually have in the subject, uh, I have uh, the branch, uh, so I get refs heads master or ref yeah. heads 4.4, four, and that allows me to, um, I, I've set my mail client up to, hey, I care about 4.4 four and I care about master. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see the refs. I, I don't, don't want to place a priority on seeing the refs, right? Uh, those are, if I have time, I will go look at the others. That's where I care about spending my review time. And uh, that has helped a, a good deal. Um, but you're right, you may 
you may be talking about 20 times the number of commit messages otherwise. Yeah, we are also rethinking to introduce code review. So maybe the commit message is just an indicator for something has changed and then you switch to another tool. So, but we haven't found the right solution for, it, for that right now. Hmm. Um, can I ask what project? Uh, it's Olingo. Olingo? Okay. Um, Recently graduated. It was yes. announced on Monday. Yeah, I'll, I will try and remember to go look at, at what the git commit message is. And if, if you find that it is not set up to reflect the branch in the, in the subject line um, and the project wants to make that change, that's a 45-second change, five minutes worth of logging in okay. and, and doing things, and happy to do that because if you are a high-volume project, it, it does absolutely become unbearable. Okay, we'll check it. Yeah. Thanks. Yes, sir. If I merge something into trunk, uh, then if I had a feature branch, the history that I had from that branch is now part of that merge commit, right? So it's in that trunk branch. So what do you mean by that? So, but, all right. So we start off at master, and I have a feature, and you have a feature. We're going to go develop that in feature branches. So uh, we check out, uh, we create a branch, check out the branch. Uh, make our uh, changes, we're committing as we go along. So feature branch David has a commit and you get a copy of that uh, commit message when I make a commit. I make five or 10 commits and uh, I'm then going to, um, I'm then going to merge. If I make the merge, another 10 commit messages come out. There are some things you can do. You could squash a commit, squash commits uh, as part of your merge strategy so that uh, your feature branch history remains uh, as individual commits, but then the commit to master looks like the, um, the David branch feature, and it's a single commit. That also would be a, perhaps a strategy if, you, if you're squashing commits on merge. The problem with that is then you lose the tracking back you to do. that feature branch. You do. And you also lose the history, right? You don't right. see all of the justification for each one of those commits, right. which means you either have to preserve the history uh, of, preserve the branch for history, or you have to be willing to give up the so history. So I get it. around this, at least when I'm using git log, by only looking at first parent. So sure. I can just look at that main branch and not the side you know, branch for the merge. So. I was wondering if something like that could be done with the mails so that it only, you know, if it's on a branch, it's only on the first, first commit of any merge commits or first parent. I, I would not want to see that because I think it matters what actually makes it into a specific branch. Well, but, I mean, well, I, I don't know what is generating the mails because, I mean, I can think of a lot of different ways that you could show that, look, this is pointing back to the feature branch, right, it, it, when it's well, a merge commit, and, and you could point to that specific branch, and it would eliminate the duplicate emails then. I don't know that I'm ready to give up duplicating emails, personally. Um, I, I think that there's just a, a level of oversight that you would end up losing in the process, even though I'd be terribly worried about losing, losing oversight and uh, commits at no longer being a canonical record of what's going on. I, it, it would still point to things, but that's a lot of difference from here's what the code that just dropped into this branch. Uh, I think it increases the overhead. Uh, Joe or Daniel, do you think I'm off base? Yeah, I, I, I understand the reason, I understand the pain and, and deal with the pain on a daily basis. Um, but I, I just, from a, from a, as a PMC member, it's my responsibility to, to deal with the provenance of the code and ensure that it's legit uh, and that I'm responsible for what's in, what's going to be in a release. I just, uh, I can't, um, 
I can't come to terms with making it easier on myself at that cost. Um, it, it causes me uh, concern. So, um, anyone else feedback? Uh, I just want to say what we could do is is reformat the the git commit messages, the, the emails, so it's easier to filter out those that aren't master or trunk or whatever you are looking for. Mm -hmm. So that's one option. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, we already can do that relatively easy, and maybe that needs to become part of the default is uh, that we put uh, that we put the branch inside the commit subject and make that the default uh, template. Because right now, right now we don't do that. We do git commit hash short subject. I think so. Everyone else at least may with git service at the ASF. Anyone else going to go out and request a Git repo? All right, well, I am finishing early and I am happy to shut up and let you go. Thank you for coming, especially this late in ApacheCon. Uh, I appreciate it very much. If, uh, if you have questions and want to talk offline, I'm happy to talk to you about Git and uh, some of the cool things that uh, other people have done uh, although you'll be better off talking to them since they're here. So thanks very much. Thank you very much.